بولس فصل من رسالات معلمنا بولس الرسول الاولى الى اهل تسالونيكي بركات المقدسه فاتكم معنا يا ابائي اخواتي امين. ولهذا نحن ايضا نشكر الله بلا انقطاع لانكم اذ تسلمتم مما كلمه سماع الله قبلتموها لا ككلمه اناس بل كما هي بالحقيقه ككلمه الله التي تعمل ايضا فيكم انتم المؤمنين. لأنكم أيها الأخوة صرتم متمثلين بكنائس الله التي هي في اليهودية في المسيح يسوع لأنكم أنتم أيضا تحملتم من أهل عشيرتكم هذه الآلام عينها كما نحن أيضا من اليهود الذين قاتلوا الرب يسوع والأنبياء واضطهدونا نحن أيضا وهم غير مردين لله وضدار لجميع الناس يمنعوننا عن أن نتكلم مع الأمم لكي يخلصوا لكي يخلصوا حتى يتمموا خطاياهم كل حين وقد حل عليهم الغضب الى النهايه واما نحن ايها الاخوه فاذ قد عدمناكم زمان ساعه بالوجه لا بالقلب اجتهدنا اكثر باجتهاء كثير ان نرى وجوهكم لذلك اردنا ان ناتي اليكم انا بولس مره ومرتين وانما عاقاني الشيطان لان من لأن من هو رجاؤنا وفرحنا وأكيد افتخارنا ألستم أنتم أمام ربنا يسوع المسيح في ظهوره لأنكم أنتم مجدنا وفرحنا لذلك إذ لم نحتمل أيضا استحسننا أن نبقى في أثينا وحدنا فأرسلنا إليكم تيموثاوس أخانا وخادم الله وإنجيل المسيح حتى يثبتكم ويطلب عن إيمانكم كي لا يتزعزع أحد في هذه الضيقات فإنكم أنتم تعلمون أننا موضوعون لهذا الأمر لأننا لما كنا عندكم سبقنا فقلنا لكم أننا سنتضايق كما حصل أيضا وأنتم تعلمون من أجل هذا إذ لم أحتمل أيضا أرسلت, أرسلت لكي أعرف إيمانكم لعلنا المجرد يكون قد جربكم فيصير تعبنا باطل وأما الآن فإذ رجع إلينا تيموثاوس من عندكم وبشرنا بإيمانكم ومحبتكم وبأن عندكم لنا ذكرا حسنا وبأنكم تحبون أن ترون كل حين كما نحن أيضا أن نراكم فمن أجل هذا تعزينا أيها الأخوة من جهتكم في كل ضروراتنا وضيقتنا بواسطة إيمانكم لأننا الآن نعيش أن نعيش إن ثبتتم أنتم في رب لأن أي شكر نستطيع أن نعوضه إلى الله عن كل الفرح الذي نفرح به من أجلكم قدام إلهنا طالبين ليلا ونهارا أوفر طلب أن نرى وجوهكم ونكمل الناقص من إيمانكم والله نفسه أبونا وربنا يسوع المسيح يهدي طريقنا إليكم ورب ينميكم أنتم ويزيدكم في المحبة بعضكم لبعض وللجميع كما نحن أيضا لكم لكي يثبت قلوبكم بلا لوم في انتهار أمام الله وأبينا عند ظهور يسوع المسيح مع جميع قدسي أمين نعمة الله الآب تنتحل على أرواحنا يا أبائي وأخواتي أمين Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges a brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your field, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. 
You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts up in the day of slaughter. Do not let the world where things are in the world. The world shall pass away in all desires. But he who does the will of God shall die forever. Amen. <laughs> sister Eduxeia were martyred. Their parents were pious Christians who loved sojourners. They brought them up in Christian manner. When Benjamin grew up, he longed to be martyred for the sake of the name of Christ. He wanted to shut them off and confess the Lord Christ before the governor. The governor tortured him much, then cast him in prison. When his parents and sister knew about this, they came to him weeping, but he comforted them and told them about the vanity of this world and the life of the coming age, which has no end. When his sister heard that, she told him, God lives. I shall not separate from you until we die together. The governor cast them in a dark place for twenty days. Then he took them out and hanged heavy stones on their necks and threw them in the river. The angel of the Lord came and loosened the stones. They swam until they arrived in the town of Petra. A virgin found them and rescued them. They then returned to the governor and gained they come. Again they confessed the Lord Christ before him. The governor ordered to cut off their head, and they received the crown of martyrdom. The faithful built a church in their name, 
and their town shut off, may their prayers be with us all amen. And on this day also, St. Mary the Armenian was martyred. She was captured by the Muslims who asked her to deny her face in the Lord Christ. She refused, so they tortured her severely, but she remained steadfast in her faith. They threatened to burn her alive in blazing pit, but the gas, the gate of, by the gate of Zuela in Cairo, many gathered there. The crowd tried to threaten her from the suffering and to persuade her to change her counsel. But she answered, saying, It is good that I deliver up my soul in the hand of my Master, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then she quickly threw her, they quickly threw her self in the fire pit. Thus she received the crown of martyrdom. May her prayers be of the soul of man, and glory be to God forever. Amen. Listen to the Holy Gospel, chapter from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. 
May his blessings be with us all. Amen. From the song of our teacher David, the prophet and king, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. The heavens are yours. The earth is yours. You have founded the world and the fullness of it. You have created the north and the sea. Let your hand be strengthened. Let your right hand be exalted. خلصنا ملكنا كلنا ربنا يسوع المسيح ابن الله الحي الذي له المجد الدائم ويعقوب ويوحنا وأندراوس على انفراد قل لنا متى يكون هذا وما هي العلامة عندما يتم جميع هذا فابتدى يسوع يقول لهم انظروا لا يضلكم أحد فإن كثيرين سيأتون باسم قائلين أنا هو المسيح ويضلون كثيرين فإن سمعتم بحروب وأخبار حروب فلا تضطربوا لأنه لا بد أن تكون ولكن ليس المنتهى بعد لأنه تقوم أمة على أمة ومملكة على مملكة وتكون زلازل وأوبئة في أماكن وتكون مجاعات وهذه مبتدا الأوجاع فانظروا إلى نفوسكم لأنهم سيسلموكم إلى مجالس وسيضربونكم في المحافل وتوقفون أمام ولاة وملوك من أجل شهادة لهم ولجميع الأمم وينبغي أولا أن يكرز بالإنجيل فإذا قدموكم ليسلموكم فلا تهتموا من قبل بما تتكلمون به لأنكم تعطون في تلك الساعة ما تتكلمون به لأن لستم أنتم المتكلمين بل الروح القدوس وسيسلم الأخ وأخاه إلى الموت والأب يسلم ابنه وتقوم الأولاد على آبائهم ويقتلونهم وتكونون مبغضين من الجميع من أجل اسمي والذي يصبر إلى المنتهى فهذا يخلص فمتى نظرتم ركسة الخراب التي قال عنها دانيال النبي قائمة حيث لا ينبغي ليفهم القارئ حينئذ ليهرب الذين في اليهودية إلى الجبال والذي على السطح لا ينزل ولا يدخل ليأخذ شيئا من بيته والذي في الحقل لا يرجع ليأخذ ثيابه فويل للحبالة والمرضعات في تلك الأيام وصلوا لكي لا يكون هربكم في شتاء لأن تلك الأيام ستكون ضيقا لم يكن مثله منذ ابتداء الخليقة التي خلق الله إلى الآن ولن يكون بعد ولو لم يجعل الرب تلك الأيام قصيرة لم يخلص كل ذي جسد ولكن لأجل المختارين الذين اختارهم قصر الأيام فإذا قال لكم أحد هو ذا المسيح ها هنا أو هو ذا هناك فلا تصدقوا لأنه سيقوم مشحاء كذبة وأنبياء كذبة ويعطون آيات وعجائب لكي, لا يضل لكي يضلوا لو أمكن المختارين أيضا 
فانظروا أنتم ها أنا قد سبقت وقلت لكم كل شيء بل في تلك الأيام بعد ذلك الضيق الشمس تظلم والقمر لا يعطي ضوءه والنجوم تتساقط من السماء وقوات السماوات تتزعزع حين إذن يبصرون ابن الإنسان آتيا في السحاب بقوة ومجد عظيم فيرسل حين إذن ملائكته ويجمع مختاريه من الأربع الرياح من أقصاء الأرض إلى أقصاء السماء فمن شجرة التين عرف المثل متى صار أغصانها لينة وأخرجت أوراقا تعلمون أن الصيف قريب هكذا أنتم أيضا إذ رأيتم هذه الأشياء صائرة فاعلموا أنه قريب على الأبواب الحق أقول لكم لا يمضي هذا الجيل حتى يكون هذا كله السماء والأرض تزولان ولكن كلامي لا يزول أما ذلك اليوم وتلك الساعة فلا أحد يعرفها ولا الملائكة الذين في السماء ولا الإبن إلا الآب انظروا اسهروا وصلوا لأنكم لا تعرفون متى يكون الوقت كأنما إنسان مسافر ترق بيته وأعطى عبيده السلطان ولكل واحد عمله وأوصل بواب أن يسهر اسهروا إذن لأنكم لا تعرفون متى يأتي رب البيت أمساء أم نصف الليل أم صياح الديك أم صباحا لألا يأتي بغتة فيجدكم نياما وما أقوله لكم أقوله للجميع اسخروا Today is the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Misra. <coughs> As I told you before, that the month of Misra is the last complete month uh, in the Coptic calendar, in the Coptic year. And the reading during this month, driving our focus to fa- the fact that our life will vanish like this year. And one day we're going to leave this earth, and one day God will come to judge the living and the dead. Today was about the sign of the second coming of Christ. The sign of the second coming of Christ. And you're going to find it in the book of St. Matthew, St. Luke, and St. Saint, and Saint Mark. Though the reading today was from the book of St. Mark, chapter 13, about the signs of his second coming. I will not go through the signs of the second coming because I think we did before but I will go with the fact that He is coming the Lord is coming so to understand why our life on earth is not everything we have to understand, to understand our nature as a human being. So, um, I'd like to go with you during this human timeline. Every human being go through this human timeline. For every and each one of us, there is a beginning. There is a starting point, which is 
his date of birth. So the starting point for us all is our date of birth. This is we can't determine. No one chooses when to be born and where to be born and from whom to be born. This is out of our hands. Though anything else, it's out of our free will. So maybe these are the three things that were, or the fourth would be the end of our life. Four things in our life, we have no influence on it. But the rest is ours. Okay? So all of us have a starting point. And for a period of time, nobody knows about this period of time. Can be a day, a year, ten years, hundred years, whatever. But after this period of time, we're going to pass through death. And what is death? In our understanding, what is death? Separation between the spirit and the body. Here is death. When our spirit leaves our body, so our body will die. There is no life in it. But the spirit is alive. So the first thing to understand is we have body and spirit. The spirit comes from God. And it, it is the source of life. And it will still alive. Spirit cannot die. So where the spirit goes after separated from body? Do you know? Okay. Okay, thank you. We have a waiting place. A waiting place. There is a waiting place. Before Christ, and before his salvation and crucifixion, there were only one place to be waited in. Regardless, you are a good man or a bad man. Which was? Hate. Hate. But after our Lord Jesus Christ crucified on the cross and paid the price and defeated the devil, he went into Hades and released the righteous people who were waiting for him in faith that he gonna come and release them and took them to paradise. So nowadays we have two waiting places. One for the righteous people, whoever believed in our Lord Jesus Christ, got baptized and abide in Him and He in Him. And for those who denied Him, does not accept Him, or did not live according to His will and according to His word, there is another place which is again Hades. So the waiting place nowadays, we have two places, Paradise and Hades. So how long are we going to stay in this waiting place? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So what would be the turning point of this waiting place? The second coming of Christ. This waiting area or, sorry, this waiting period will end at the second coming of Christ. So what will happen in his second coming? As it's mentioned in Matthew 25, he will sit in his throne, okay, and judge everybody according to his deed. For sure, according to his belief and according to his deed, both together. It works together. And will say to those who did good, Come to me, O blessed of my Father, inherit the heaven, or that I was prepared for you before the foundation of the earth. So again, on the second coming of Christ, the spirit and the body will join again. Amazing. Body, after being dust, we raise up again? Yes. That's why we call it the resurrection of the dead. How come? 
It's impossible. If you believe, nothing is impossible for God. He's the creator. He's the one who created me. So, it's not hard for him to raise my body back. Not only to his fairest form, but it, we, it will be in, even in a, what I can say, supernature. The body who will be raised in the second coming of Christ will be like the body that our Lord Jesus Christ raised with in his resurrection. That's why we call him the first fruit. Because he is the first one who rose from the dead with the body of the resurrection. This body cannot die anymore, alas, no death. And this body does not need of eating or drinking or sleeping or resting or medicine or treatment, that's it. So this body will join the spirit again and go to judgment. Whatever I have done during my very, very, very small period on earth, I make this timeline just to give you a feeling about our life on earth is nothing if we compare it with the rest of our life. Yeah. So and after the judgment, it will be eternity, no end. Unlimited and everlasting. Either everlasting life or everlasting punishment. So our life on earth, though it's so, 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 so small, it determines exactly our eternal destiny. So that's why the Lord alerting us, be careful, be watching. Whatever decisions you take on earth will gonna affect your eternity. Then again, as we see in this timeline, whatever we choose, whatever choices we took in the first part which is very tiny, we're going to affect our waiting place, we're going to affect our eternity. So be wise. Be wise. Took the right decision. Took the right decision. Our life on earth will pass away anyway. Will be ended. But again, whatever comes after is based on this very tiny period. So try to take the right decision in your life because this will affect your attorney. What I'm saying to you, I'm saying to all, watch therefore because you do not know either the day nor the hour when the Lord will come. That's why the church, as a mother, each day, each day, through the hourly prayers, alerted us that our life will pass away. Let's offer repentance before it's too late. Get to know God before it's too late. Love one another because it's before it's too late. Try to apply the word of God in your life and walk according to his will before it's too late. Time is running, I can tell. We can't even recognize that we're coming, it's August now, at, uh, sorry, beginning of September. Some are finished. <laughs> Three quarters of the years already passed. Time is running. 
And if I sit with myself and think backwards about what I have done in my life, what I have done in my life, if I evaluate my faith, my belief, and my deeds, and my behavior, in which position I will be. Again, the day is coming. The day is coming. It may be soon. <coughs> it may be... <coughs> Sorry. It may be sooner than what you can expect. Just like that. And at that time, I can tell you, nothing will be worth it. Money, positions, Whatever is not worth it. Today is an ex at the Synexarian, we heard about two nice stories. The first one about a brother and sister who accept to be tortured and persecuted for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because the brother, the big brothers, told his younger sister, that's fine. We will be tortured for a day or two or a year, but will not deny Jesus. Make a right decision. We'll confess our faith with our Lord Jesus Christ regardless. First, we will not let our food to be slumbered. He will, he will be with us. He will encourage us and support us. Second, we will gain eternal life. So that's nothing comparing with eternal life. Because it's never ending, it's unlimited, it's everlasting. And they took the right decision, and they martyred in the, for the sake of Christ, and they received the crown of martyrdom. And now they are in a, in a better waiting place, and waiting for even a better glory after the judgment day. The second story about St. Mary of Armenians, again the same story. They try to threaten her to deny Christ, or they're going to burn her in a fire. Okay? What's up? This was the spirit. This was the faith. This was how our fathers lived. But they were not alone. I can tell you. No one can carry this kind of suffering alone. That's why the Lord is here. And He is stretching His arms for all of us. Come to Me. Come to Me, O heavy burdens. I will comfort you. Trust Me. Trust Me. Follow Me. Again, whatever decision you take here on earth, we're going to affect your eternal decision. As we are eternal creature. We are eternal creature. So we have been created to live forever. Yes, we have a starting point, but we have no end. This is a fact. This is a fact. So let's understand it. And let us look to everything according to this idea. Our life on earth is very, 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 very limited. Though, whatever decisions we took on earth, we're going to affect our eternal destiny. Let's, let us take the right decision that will ensure our eternal destiny life. And again, we can't be alone. We need help. We need grace. We need power. We need strength from above. So let's ask for it. Let's come closer. Let's put our set, our hope and our goal in our Lord Jesus Christ who asking all of us today to watch. Again, the church every day during the Vesper prayer at 11th hour and 12th hour and the midnight hour, reminding us our day will finish. Let us offer repentance and wait earnestly and faithfully 
to the second coming of Christ. Okay? And every week during the liturgy, okay, we have the Lord in between of us. That's why we say, as we commemorate His first coming, okay, His crucifixion, His resurrection from the dead, His ascension into the heaven, and His second coming, awesome and full of glory. So, it's a nice time during the liturgy to remind yourself of the second coming of Christ. It's a nice time to try to prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord. It's a perfect time to offer repentance and ask for forgiveness and ask for help and ask for grace and ask for strength for your weakness. And as we say in the Tazbeha, we follow you with all our hearts, with all our mind, and with all our ability. Let us focus on Him. Raise your eyes towards the altar and see our Lord Jesus Christ sit on it, a king on His throne. Let us focus on him. I can tell you, again, we are eternal creatures. Nothing temporal can satisfy us. Believe me, nothing, nothing temporal can satisfy us because we are eternal creatures. That's why we are not satisfied. We are eating, eating, eating and we're still hungry. We are drinking and we're still thirst. We are looking for a better position than uh, whatever lifestyle or whatever, and we're still, we're still not satisfied because we are eternal. And no one can satisfy us but the Lord, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as a Yani something practical we can do. Yani, I'm encourage all of you at the end of the day after dinner to pray at least hmm, a psalm from the eleventh hour, okay? And the gospel, the litany after the gospel and the absolution. For the eleventh hour and the twelfth hour. Okay? Just to remind yourself that the day will Come and have to be ready. I have to be ready. And it would be so awesome if we can gather the whole family to pray together. So we we remind one another, watch therefore, because you do not know either the day, neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.